Story time. Two years ago, I was living in a cramped apartment in a large building in Washington Heights, New York, and I realized that the city I used to love now made me miserable. And that's because all the things that make a city like New York awesome, like you know, buzzing nightlife and a killer art scene just suddenly evaporated with the pandemic. And all the things that make a city like New York terrible, like subpar living conditions in, in a sardine can sized apartment just pulled sharply into focus. For me, that was the bat signal to move across the world, from the city that I never wanted to leave, to a city I never expected to return to. Like millions of other people, the thing that changed my housing priorities the most wasn't the pandemic. It was remote work. It no longer mattered that I lived pretty close to the office, and it really mattered that I didn't have room for a desk. So what happens when you zoom out and look at the relationship between remote work and housing from a macro view? That's the topic of this week's episode of Out of Office, the future forward weekly web show that gives you all the latest on remote work in just a few minutes. So the reason we're talking about housing this week is because of this article that was just published by CNBC. Now the backdrop is that house prices in the US went up by 24% between 2019 and 2021. But to hear them tell it, you'd think remote work is some kind of bogeyman who goes around like making people pay more for things. <laughs> but just like in, in Scooby-Doo, where it always turns out to be the janitor, seriously, why is it always the janitor? The truth here, is a lot less sinister. And I know that because I read the research study that this article is based on, which was published by the Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco. Here's what we do know. Number one, lots of people started working remotely. Number two, house prices increased. Number three, they increased the most in the kind of beautiful beachy or mountainous small towns that everyone would want to live in if work wasn't a factor. But as any statistics major can tell you, correlation doesn't equal causation. And because everyone's working remotely now, there's no control group, which makes parsing out the truth a little harder. For starters, here's how house prices changed where I live now in New Zealand over the same two year period. Pfft, shocking, right? I was blown away when I realized it's cheaper to buy a place in Manhattan than my hometown, even after the latest bump. The average house in my country recently passed a million dollars. And that's not a nice house, that's an average house. So don't come crying to me about unaffordable homes if your city still has options in the 300s. Setting that aside, I can't help but wonder if the phenomenon that we're observing right now is less of a hike and more of a correction back to how things naturally would have progressed if the way we work hadn't put such a vice grip on the way we live for so long. For decades. We've all been seeing the same stories about the exodus from small communities into massive cities. And, and who won from that? Just like in Monopoly, the people who own all the land in the big cities won. And that means corporations and hedge funds. So now that people can live wherever they want, there's a natural restoration of supply and demand that just brings the lifeblood back to small towns that have needed it for a really long time. And who wins from that? People living in small towns win because their values increase. People moving to small towns win because they're free to live wherever they want, whether that's near family or near the beach. And people still living in big cities even win because there's less congestion and in some cases less competition too. Really the only people who lose are the landlords and hedge fund managers who bet everything on the belief that people would be willing to work in a corporate cubicle farm day in and day out for the rest of their lives no matter how much it really costs them. And now that I'm finally on the other side of it and I get to live here, it's never been clearer to me that compromising the place you live just because you need to be near an office has never been worth it. And I, for one, am glad the world started to wake up. I'm Andrew Allen, and the future of work is out of office.